Every Sunday, we strive to be a place of welcome to anyone and everyone who comes to our church. One of our challenges today is that we often don't feel welcome in God's house. We try our best to be a welcoming community. And every Sunday we invite visitors to stand, we might acknowledge their presence and thank them for coming to worship with us in our church. Today I want to move that up a little bit and invite all visitors to please stand. We might acknowledge your presence and welcome you. So would you stand, visitors to St. Martin de Porres this morning? Welcome to St. Martin de Porres Catholic Church. Thank you. And the vast majority of those visitors come from St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Springfield, one of our great friends. Many, many people bless our community throughout the Christmas season, Advent season. But I always say it's something very special about St. Francis. I say this every year. The St. Francis not just bring, don't just bring their gifts, but they bring the gift of themselves to worship with us. And I'm very happy you're here to join us together in God's house. At God's table, the Eucharist, there is no black or white, no male or female, nor suburban or city or Democrat or Republican. We're all one family in God's house. And the more we get to understand that, the better all of us will be. I invite you to pray with me today. Pray over me. Pray for me. To God's word I have prepared. It may be what God wants you to hear. No preacher should dare mount a pulpit without first asking for God's blessing. The people, the people might be blessed as well. Loving God, we, we know you are worthy to be praised. Every praise belongs to you. Thank you so much for allowing us to get up this morning. Thank you so much for allowing us to have a place to worship together. Anoint this word, Lord. Saturate it with your spirit. And what comes out of my mouth may be for your glory and honor. The church say, Amen. 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 Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. All right. I got a big mouth, so I'm trying my best. You know, one of my very best friends, anytime I challenge him about anything, he often will say to me, you know, Steve, talk is cheap. I can show you better than I can tell you. I can show you better than I can tell you. That little phrase comes to mind this morning because we gather on this third Sunday of Advent. And the figure in the gospel today, as it was last Sunday, is John the Baptist. John the Baptist is one of the most unique people in all of Scripture. In fact, Jesus says today in the gospel, there's no one born of woman greater than John the Baptist. John the Baptist and Jesus have a connection to each other, not just by blood. Their moms were cousins. John leaped in his mother's womb so close was man's salvation. There's a connection, not just by blood, but by mission. Everything about John was to prepare the way of the Lord. Anybody go to a concert? There's always an opening act, right? To get the crowd ready for the main event. John is the opening act for the main event. John is the one that God sent to tell the people, make straight his paths. The things in our life that are not right, get it right. The things in our, li our li life that are crooked, make it straight. Do the work to prepare the way of the Lord. That's all John talked about. And John knew who he was. One of his lines, he says, I must decrease. He must increase. That should be every Christian's prayer. I must decrease. But you, God, 
You get all the praise, all the glory, all the thanks, because God deserves it. Another thing John said, that the priest utters at Mass, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He's always pointing out who Jesus is. But John, in our gospel today, if you were paying attention, John is having a struggle today. John's in prison because of the word. If you follow Jesus completely, you might have some challenges in your life. Because if the word and the world are not always on the same page. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning when you're trying to follow Jesus? In a very twisted world, when folks ask you, why are you going to church? Why do you still believe that stuff? And John finds himself locked up because of the word. John spoke the truth. And that truth will always set you free. But it got John locked up. Because truly living out our faith, and not just playing with it, but true living out your faith might find you in conflict with the world. John's in prison, and John is really struggling to understand, is this worth it? What I've given my life to, is it worth it? Is it all just a joke? Sometimes we wonder, I'm trying to do my best, but my wife, my, my husband, are you truly with me? I've tried my best to raise my children the right way. To what cost? I try my best to live right and do right. And I see so much nastiness and ugliness in the world. Y'all ain't with me this morning. I'm going to keep on preaching. We might even ask ourselves as Christians, where is the love in a divided nation that we find ourselves in? In these historic days, where's the United States of America? We find ourselves twisted when we see so much violence, and not just in North Philly. Violence all over, that people can't seem to solve their difficulties without guns and knives and nasty words. We might ask ourselves a question, well, where is the love when those who have get more? And those who really have a need are left out. You all got quiet now, didn't you? You know, I love that line from the great spiritual author, take what you need. and leave the rest for someone else. Take what you need and leave the rest for somebody else. John is struggling. He sends a word. Are you the one who is to come? Or do we search for somebody else? And Jesus says, I can show you better than I can tell you. I can show you, John, much better than I can tell you. Go back and tell John what you have seen. What have you seen? The blind regain their sight. The lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news. I'm still in the blessing business. Go and tell John what you have seen, have seen, not just have you seen it. I can show you 
much better than I can tell you. And John's words, the words of Jesus to John, challenge me, challenge you, challenge all of us that our work of Christmas is to show up, to do right, to put our faith into action. It's not just about giving gifts, as important as that is. Maybe it's the gift we give of love. Maybe it's the gift we give of forgiveness. Maybe it's a gift we give of inclusion and compassion to someone on the edge. Maybe it's sharing the gift of ourself. That gift shows our faith is alive. And we do it in a joyful way. A joyful way. Because joy, as Sister said so beautifully today, is not about just being happy. Happy is a feeling. I'm joyful because I know if I just hold on, help is on the way. If I just hold on a little while longer, help is on the way. Hold on. He may not come when you want him. But my God is an on-time God. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but he's an on-time God. He makes no mistakes. Long before anybody sang it, Emmanuel, we worship you. Give you praise and thanks because you deserve it. And when those praises go up, the blessings come down when the praises of God's people go up when folks show like they know that they know that they know how good God is and you show it not just talking let me share a story before I take my seat this morning I found myself a few weeks ago in Washington DC for a meeting And it was easier for me to travel about the district by metro. Anybody who knows me, I'm not a real public trans kind of guy, especially the metro. Unless you know red line, blue line, green line, you get all confused. So I found myself trying to get from one spot to the next on the metro. And folks know when you're a visitor, they know you're trying to figure out, am I going here, there, up, down? They're just laughing at you. I was one of those folks. Well, I found myself going in the right direction, the Union Station. And I was on this particular seat where my back was to the majority of the train. Y'all with me so far? And it was a a gentleman who came in around Benning Road. You know where Benning Road is. And, and he was sitting right far from Mariana City. And so he got on and took his seat, looked at me. I looked down. <laughs> he kept looking at me. I kept looking down. Hi. <laughs> But anyway, our ride continued. And and towards the end of our time together in the metro, I noticed him make a motion to somebody who was behind me. He said, yo, come up here. And I don't know what was going on. (laughs) And I saw this young man come towards him and sit beside him. It was obvious very obvious from sight, smell, and hearing. He was homeless. He sat beside him. And he engaged him in conversation. Still see this moment of theology 
not in a seminary classroom, not in a workshop, but on the metro. Because my God can show up anywhere my God wants to show up. And after this conversation ensued, he said to the young man, he said, what's your name? My name is Jamal. He said, Jamal, are you hungry? He said, yeah, I'm hungry. He reached in his bag that some might would think had a weapon in it as we profile oftentimes our black young men. But he reached in his bag and took out his lunch. And he said, here you go. You can have my lunch. I share that story today because I was taught that day on the metro, what it means to give yourself away. Sometimes we give over our leftovers, don't we? Our extras. But he gave his meal to somebody who was hungry. I know a man. I know a man who gave us much more than his lunch. I know a man, y'all better get up. I know a man who gave us his body, his blood, his soul, his divinity on the cross, Emmanuel. We worship you. You deserve the praise and the thanks. We worship you, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. We worship you. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. And we thank you, Lord. Let us never forget whose birthday it is. Let us never forget. <laughs> I can show you, but I can tell you. Amen. <laughs>